Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I am streaming to you from beautiful Budapest. I hope everybody has had a great start to their week. In this class, we are focusing on the speaking section, specifically speaking part one. Good to see many students in the class. Hi, Pachu. You have the right idea to collect words regarding grocery stores and grocery shopping. Hi, Shang Hung. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Awaz. Good to see many of our members and our regular students, Juan Pablo and Morasa. Nice to see everyone. Welcome. Uh, these uh, lessons are brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS help. Check us out there. Six original practice exams, over 100 hours of video lessons, and a fully interactive course with strategies and tips to get those high band scores. For general IELTS, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's general ieltshelp.com where we focus on the general module. Hi, Carolina. I'll see you later today in our uh, speaking interview session. And uh, while we wait for a few more students to join in, I'll quickly show you these websites. This is the academic website here with the blue background. Click that big red button to join our premium package. It's definitely worth it. Spend a couple dollars. Save yourself a lot of stress having to sit the exam again and again. Uh, the general version of our site looks like this, G-I-E-L-T-S help.com. Green background, click that red button to join us there. For our academic website, we also have an amazing app that you can download from your app store, search for academic I-E-L-T-S help. And good news, at the end of this month, we will also have an app for the general version of the website as well. Students, you can get our exam books from Amazon. Uh, search for AE Helps Academic IELTS or GE Helps General IELTS for our exam books. And to get in touch with me, you can do that by email. My name, Adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. Hi, Eugene. I'm doing great. Thank you for those happy emojis, as always. Uh, now, uh, this is our schedule for these live classes, November 6th to 9th. You can find this uh, on our YouTube community bulletin board on the channel also. Uh, we have classes 1330 for members and 15 o'clock for everyone. Of course, everybody can watch those members chat classes. You just have to be a member to chat. We have listening, task one, task two, and speaking practice coming up this week. All right, let's get into our speaking, and this is a speaking class, so don't be shy. Speak, repeat, repeat me. Uh, if you're wondering, I speak uh, Canadian, West Coast Canadian English. Uh, so if you go to Vancouver, Victoria, along the west coast of North America, Seattle, San Francisco, you will hear a very similar accent to mine. It's a very clear west coast North American accent. Uh, again, repeat and speak during this lesson, not just for the answers, but also for questions. It's really important to practice questions. So let's get going. Let's warm up. Um, always when you walk into your exam, be early, be prepared, take a few deep breaths, go through your mental checklist to speak in full sentences, speak loudly, speak clearly, believe in yourself. So go through your uh, mental checklist before you walk into the exam and then you will be greeted by the examiner. Don't worry about the examiner. The examiner is tall, short, ugly, beautiful, grumpy, happy. It doesn't matter. You're there to do a job. Focus on yourself. Focus on your communication and your English. That's your goal. So the examiner will welcome you. They'll say, please take a seat. You can say thank you. And then the examiner will ask you for your identification. They do that twice, once in the speaking interview, once 
during the sit down or computer based version of your exam. So uh, may I see your identification? When they ask this question, definitely have a clear, confident answer. Uh, Happy Singh says, here's my passport. Please have a look. That's good. Sure. Awaz uh, Aksmadov says, certainly here you are. Uh, Rakib Hossein says, of course, here it is. Okay, students, make sure you're repeating me. So repeat my intonation, my enunciation. Juan Pablo Avila says, sure, here you go. Nima Atula says, yes, certainly, here it is. Xing Hung says, certainly, here you are. Please have a look. Deepak says, yeah, certainly. Here you are, have a look. Carolina says, certainly, here you are. Please have a look. It's a common one. It's good. All right. Um, sure, you can say, here is my passport. This is what I used uh, for registration. Please take a look. Okay, uh, because the ID that you give them should be the same ID. It has to be a picture ID, okay? And it has to be the same ID that you used on your registration form. Make sure it's the same ID. So if you used your national ID card, your driver's license, something like that, take that with you, okay? They will look for that. Your passport will not work in that case. So uh, repeat after me. May I see your identification? Here is my passport. This is what I used for registration. Please take a look. Then you give it to them. And look, they will. They will look at it and they will ask you this next question because they have to match you with your application. So they will ask you, what is your full name? Okay. Hi, it's Armen Jill. Good to have you as a new student. So what is your full name? Happy Singh says, my full name is Harpreet Singh Gill. However, please just call me by my nickname, Happy. What a nice nickname, Happy. Gotta say. Roshni says, my given name is Roshni and last name is Kunte. Please call me by my first name, Roshni. Asan Gul Hassan says, my first name is Ashsan and last name is Gul Hassan. You can just call me Ashsan, Ashsan. Nice, it's a nice name. Okay. Marasa says, my first name is Marasa and my family name is Varaki. Please address me by my nickname, which is Mary. Yeah, Marasa, Mary, that makes sense. Okay. Sheng Hung Tsai says, my full name is Tsai Sheng Hung. Please just call me Hung. Okay, good. Those are all some really nice uh, expressions. Again, make sure you're confident. So my given name is Thomas and my family name is Gustafsson. I'm just always making these up. Um, please just refer to me as Tom. All right. So again, repeat after me. My given name is Thomas and my family name is Gustafsson. Please just refer to me as Tom. Fantastic. All right. And then they will give your passport back. So they'll say, okay, here's your passport back. Now I will ask you a couple questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Uh, what do you like to do in the evenings? What do you like to do? In the evenings, pay careful attention to plurals. This says in the evenings. Okay. Chabi, satisfying time, says after a long, tiring day, I usually like to lay down on the bed, relax, watch an interesting nature documentary on the Discovery Channel, and uh, maybe put on a movie uh, from Netflix to recharge my batteries for the next day. Very nice, Chabi. It's a nice, complete answer. Charlie Sen says, well, generally, 
I like to spend my evenings watching movies or videos on YouTube as I need to relax after a hectic work day. Nowadays, I follow AE Help IELTS online live classes during the evenings. Not only does it help me to relax, but also I learn some higher level English. Charlie Sen, very nice. Okay, I made some corrections there, Charlie. Pay attention to those. Juan Pablo says, in the evenings, after I finish work and study, I like to unwind and read a book related to my interests. Nowadays, I'm reading a book on creativity because I'm a designer. Oh, just give me a second. My camera likes to fall asleep once every week. Hopefully, this is the one and only time. In the meantime, you get to see my pretty little daughter for a moment. All right, here we are, back to point. Those are some really nice answers, um, students, and I can see that you're practicing responding to these common type questions, which is great because in the first couple minutes of the speaking interview, you really do want to come across as confident and fluent. It, has, it does have a big impact on the overall score. So you want to start and finish strong, but definitely start strong. Ideally, you want to be strong throughout the whole speaking, okay? N.A. says, usually in the evenings, I like to read the newspaper with a cup of tea. It helps me to unwind and also keeps me up to date. Also keeps me updated with the most current local and international affairs. Just the other day, I read uh, about an interesting story. There's a new panda in the local zoo. Okay, N.A., give some examples there when you have a chance, okay? And so... Uh, after hiring work day, I like to cook a delicious yesterday I had some I uh, use watch that just came out. All right. So, uh, repeat after me. Uh, what do you like to do in the evenings? After a tiring work day, I like to cook a delicious meal. Yesterday, I made some Alfredo pasta, and then around 8 p.m., I usually watch a movie on Netflix, like the new season of 100 that just came out, okay? Watch a show would be more accurate. Remember, students, I believe this was last week when I gave you this advice that if you want to sound really natural and pick up some points for being natural and fluent, uh, always uh, practice putting examples into your sentences uh, whenever you have the chance. So put the example into the sentence, smooth flowing. I'm not saying for example here, I'm not saying for instance, I'm not even saying the word like or just. I'm literally going into the example because it makes sense based on the information. So one more time, after a tiring work day, I like to cook a delicious meal. Yesterday, I made some Alfredo pasta and then around 8 p.m. I usually watch a show on Netflix like the new season of 100 that just came out. So here, it's very clear for the examiner that you're talking about your evenings. You're giving some nice complex sentences after a tiring work day, which is a complex sentence using the subordinating condition of time. Also, you're giving details and quantitative language, 8 p.m. So you're telling 
the examiner that you know what evenings means in the English language. Okay, so focus on that. All right, next question. Here we go. And what do you like to do at the weekends? What do you like to do at the weekends? Give me a nice answer for that. Hadi is asking, hello, sir. Are you, I think this class improve our speaking? Absolutely, Hadi, especially if you practice what I teach you. And if you repeat what I say, I am certain that it will improve your speaking. Okay. Um, Osama bin Zahur says, well, I like to spend some time with my friends on weekends or maybe go to the cinema for a movie night and go to a pub after as I did last Saturday. I went to the Rock House pub and had a couple of drinks. Okay, Osama, that's good. Finish up the example with a specific concept, anything. Just come up with a specific imaginary idea. Okay, give it even more detail. Amy Thidok says, during the weekends, I love to travel. I generally go out for small trips. That includes some type of hiking and nature uh, travel, okay, or nature hike. It really helps me uh, to rejuvenate for the upcoming work week, okay? Uh, Ame Thadok, uh, don't uh, repeat yourself. Rejuvenate and charge my batteries. It's the same, okay? Either say rejuvenate, which is a nice lexical resource, it's nice vocabulary, or say charge my batteries, which is a nice natural expression. Both rejuvenate and charge my batteries are good. Don't say both. It's repetitive. Try not to repeat yourself, okay? It's important. And make sure to stay on topic. Milka says, uh, usually I prefer to spend my weekends with friends just to get together and go out somewhere. However, at times I do love to stay at home and just read a book or watch some movies. Give me an example of that. It's good. Uh, Preeti says, at the weekends, I love to hang out with my friends. Just last Saturday, I went with one of my five friends to Kumbhalgara a place that we enjoy a lot. What is Kumbh Algra, Preeti? Give me that information. Don't make me guess. I'm an alien. I don't know, but I'd like to. Okay, think of me as an alien. Abeda Ravat says, on weekends, I usually invite my friends and family members to my home. We have lunch together, and then we chit-chat with each other. Sometimes we go outside to the park or the theater for a movie. Okay. Some nice answers there, students. Again, be specific, be descriptive. So on Saturdays, I like doing adventurous activities like going for hikes in nature. as I did last weekend when my friends and I went to the summit of Mount Doug. It's actually a beautiful mountain in my hometown of Victoria. And then on Sundays, I usually do a relaxing activity like watching a movie or going out to a restaurant for some food. All right. So break it down. Uh, weekends are Saturdays, Sundays. For some people, it includes Fridays. Be descriptive, okay? So take the concept, take the question that the examiner gives you and then break it down into details and components so that you can elaborate 
Oftentimes, the examiner, especially in part three, will even say, can you elaborate on that? So don't go off topic. Don't introduce a lot of different ideas. Instead, introduce one or two ideas, depending on the question, and go into details. Repeat after me. On Saturdays, I like doing adventurous activities like going for hikes in nature as I did last week when my friends and I went to the summit of Mount Doug. And then on Sundays, I usually do a relaxing activity like watching a movie or going out to a restaurant for some food. Okay, that works well. All right. So now the examiner will introduce the specific topic of part one. They will say, all right, now let's talk about. Before we get there, so before I show you the questions, let's discuss two important points for getting those high band scores. Firstly, how do you give complete answers? So this is me asking you, okay? How do you make sure that you're giving complete answers to the examiner so that you're getting as much of a band score as possible? Okay. So Awaz says, give examples and include all information. Okay. I'm going to take that first point that you said there. So, uh, your answers and explanations. Sure, that's a good one. Awaz, I like it. Okay. Chabi says, give the idea, the explanation, and the example. Okay, sure. So, answer, explain, example. Now, don't overdo the examples. That can be a little bit awkward. Um, Pachu says use some connectives, so use conjunctions, okay? Very good. Deepak says use quantitative and qualitative language. Quantitative and qualitative language. Quantitative means numbers, right? So use numbers. Very true, okay? Just like I did up here when I said that uh, in the evenings um, at 8 p.m., right? So 8 p.m. is quantitative language. Very good, okay? So use quantitative language. All right. What else? Pachu says, use complex sentences. That's making your language more complex. It's not necessarily making sure that it's a complete answer. There's still a very, very, uh, a very important point. Let's see if anybody. Okay, Happy says, make sure to use the grammar of questions. Okay, that's a good point. So use the grammar. Or another way to say it, happy, is uh, reflect the grammar of questions, sure. So if the examiner is asking present perfect, answer present perfect. There we go, Marasa, that's a very important point. So Marasa says, paraphrase the question, use the question in your answer. And Samara says, don't faint during the exam. Yes, yeah, Samara, definitely don't faint uh, during the exam. Uh, relax, okay, relax, for sure. But very important to use the question in your answer or answers and paraphrase as much as possible. Okay, so here, The question is, what do you like to do in the evenings? Now here I started with after a tiring work day. And what I can do to make sure that I'm giving a complete answer is just use this part of the question, okay? So after a tiring work day, and you can just kind of stick it in there, in the evenings, 
I like to cook a delicious meal. So just by making sure that I put this in there and I reflect that element of the question, it gives a very high level of assurance that I'm clearly and specifically answering the question. It also helps me to stay on track, stay focused on the question. Good. Okay. So those are some really nice answers, students. How do you give complete answers? Make sure to answer, give explanations and examples. Use quantitative language that will help make the information clear. Reflect the grammar of the question and use the question in your answer. Paraphrase as much as possible. Okay, uh, one more question for you before uh, we go on to the part one specifics of this speaking session. The next question is, how do you give detailed answers? So what can you do to make sure that you're giving detailed answers? Giving detailed answers is very, very important. Okay. And I copy pasted use quantitative numbers and qualitative language. Okay. So what else can I do to make sure that I'm including lots of detail, rich, valuable detail? into my answers. So Dellen Patel says, add examples. Sure. Okay. So notice how that comes up both times as well. Obviously very important. Okay. Learning says by giving examples and description of ideas. So what does it mean to give descriptions? Okay. How do I describe what, what kinds of language tools help me to describe? Especially in part one, you can use personal examples, Sharma Saab. There we go. So Dung Nguyen says for your point number two, Dung, uh, Dung says, uh, use more descriptive adjectives and adverbs. Okay, very good. So I'll take that one. Yes, use descriptive adjectives and adverbs. Now, if you have our app, Academic English Help, every day we send you a vocabulary notifications and you'll notice that a lot of them are adverbs and adjectives. And the reason we send you that it's because we know that adjectives and adverbs are very important for high band scores in the speaking and writing. They make your speaking and writing a lot richer, a lot more powerful. Okay. Uh, Mr. Beck says use adjective clauses. Absolutely. Okay. Use adjective and adverbial clauses. Absolutely. Okay. So people who, uh, computers that. All right. Very good. Okay. Use visual language. Okay. Visualize. And one more is focus on a couple of points rather than many points. Okay. So that's what you need to do. All right. So again, students, just a quick overview of these two questions, and then we get to practice. Here we go. How do you give complete answers? Include examples, answer, explain example, use quantitative language, reflect the grammar of questions, and very importantly, use the question in your answers. Paraphrase it as much as possible. How do you give detailed answers? Use quantitative language, numbers, examples. Use descriptive adjectives and adverbs. Focus on including those. When you're practicing at home, Listen to yourself, record yourself, practice putting in more adjectives, more adverbs, more adverbs and adverbial clauses. Use visual language, focus on a couple points rather than many points. Let's get into it. Let's talk about grocery shopping. Here we go, students. So grocery shopping, uh, 
Where do you usually buy groceries? Give me a nice full sentence response to that question and focus on those advices that I just gave you a moment ago. The advice that I gave you for those two questions. So where do you usually buy groceries? All right, Vanessa says, I typically buy groceries in a two floor supermarket about five kilometers drive from my house. It's a very convenient location and uh, there are other stores in the same space like a perfume and gift house. Okay, or a perfume and gift shop. Very good, Vanessa. So nice. So you're using that descriptive language. You're using quantitative uh, information. You can throw an example in there. I, in fact, I was just doing some grocery shopping there yesterday, right? Uh, you gave me the two-floor supermarket. Good job, Vanessa. Thumbs up. Nicely done. Awaz says, I usually go to a huge modern trade center called New Life to buy food, which is about 10K from my home. Okay. How often, Awaz? Once a week? Twice a month? Twice a week? A little bit more information. What do you mean by usually? Okay. But close. Very nice. So it's definitely a great start, Awaz. Hank says, well, there are lots of shops in my hometown, but where I usually go is the market, which is situated five minutes away from my house. Um, Hank, that's, um, it's not a strong answer. Okay. Even if you say that perfectly, the maximum score I can give you is a band seven, uh, two reasons or three reasons. Uh, one, there are lots of shops in my hometown. I didn't ask you how many shops are in your hometown. I asked you, where do you usually buy groceries? Okay, so I asked you about one store. So your answer really starts with the store I usually go is the market. Now, the store I usually go, uh, paraphrase the word usually. The store I frequently buy my groceries or the store I frequently do my shopping at. Okay, so paraphrase that a bit. Show me some lexical resource, Hank. Uh, Hank, I'm not picking on your answer, but it's a good uh, opportunity for me to explain to students how to improve their band score, okay? Now you're saying, which is situated five minutes from my home? Hank, that's a nice adjective clause, okay? That's great. It's five minutes from your house, fantastic. What's the store? Give me the name of the store, okay? Uh, go into some more details. So I still have no idea where you're actually buying your groceries, all right? Notice how the previous two students both included the name of the actual store, all right? So include description, an important part of description is the name of the store, okay? All right, uh, Pachu says, like yesterday when I went to the grocery stop, shop, which is one kilometer from my home, I think Pachu, that's a continuation of what you've already said. Um, Kelvin, Caetano says, I usually buy groceries in a mall called Complex, and there are about 20 shops. I like this place because it's not far from my house. It's only about a two-minute walk, and the prices are relatively affordable. I can buy a liter of orange juice for $1.50. Okay, Calvin, give me that quantitative language. I would love to give you a band 9 instead of a 7.5. But for that, I need a little bit more detail, okay? All right, so um, most often I buy my food at a place called Super Save, which is a large supermarket located about 10k from my house. I go there about once every two weeks. In fact, I was just there this 
last Monday. All right. So repeat after me. Where do you usually buy groceries? Most often, I buy my food at a place called Super Save, which is a large supermarket located about 10K from my house. I go there about once every two weeks. In fact, I was just there this last Monday. Not over speaking, not giving too much information, but I am including specifics, the name of the store, adjective clause, and I'm very clearly explaining where the store is and how often I actually go there. Okay, so how often I actually go there. Okay, next question. Here we go, students. Who do you go grocery shopping with? And you see the why question in brackets because that means that the examiner is instructed to ask you that if you don't automatically answer it. If you answer it automatically, which you should, then they will not ask you that question. Okay. So let's see some answers. Mr. La Layla says, I usually go to the local supermarket where it's not far from my home, which is not far from my home because it's not the location, but the store, Mr. Layla. Uh, it takes about a five minute drive and I can get good deals on most fruits and vegetables. Okay. Name of the store. Give me the name of the store, students. Carolina Asanyo says, most of the time I get some groceries with my husband who helps me carry the heavy bags. Uh, like I just mentioned last Saturday, we had five big bags full of food from the store and I carried only one of them. All right. Uh, good answer, Carolina. Sure. And you gave me the reason why you go grocery shopping with your husband because he helps you carry the bags. Excellent. Okay. Abhishek Kumar Tawari says, I usually go there with my mom because I think uh, she makes good choices and she knows a lot about the grocery items and I'm still learning the best way to conduct my gro grocery shopping. In fact, she showed me last week to always smell pineapples before buying them. Okay, good Abhishek. What does your mom teach you about grocery shopping? Give me just one interesting fact. Make it up, okay? Like always check the expiry date on milk, okay? Or take the milk from the back of the fridge, not the front of the fridge. So any of those will work. Daniil Tarasov, our member, says, if I have to fill my fridge with some food, it would be great. Uh, that my mom comes with me. She is a really smart woman and it's just easy for her to uh, select fresh and natural food at a good price. Okay, Danielle, very good. I like it. Okay, I like it. Going grocery shopping with mom. Yes, excellent. All right. Vinny Bhatia says, I'm usually accompanied by my mother as she teaches me about how to select food items. Sometimes I go alone if my mom's busy, but then I tend to buy only a few uh, bags of groceries. Okay, Vinny, I like it. Yeah. So, uh, nice paraphrasing. Let's take that word. It's some nice lexical resource. Uh, most of the time... My mom accompanies me to the store because she helps me to select quality items at affordable prices. She has a lot of experience and she is teaching me how to make wise choices, like the bunch of organic bananas I picked up on Monday for just 50 cents. All right, so making that connection of my Monday 
trip with my next answer as well. Here we go, students, uh, doing a fantastic job. I love how so many of you are paying attention to what we just discussed, focusing on one or two points, going into details. Really nice, really good. Keep that up. That's how you get those good band scores. And again, repeat. So I really want to imagine that all of these 380 beautiful people watching this live stream right now are not only listening to me, but also repeating the sentences that I'm saying and the questions that I'm saying. So that's fantastic. Here we go. Who do you go grocery shopping with? Most of the time, my mom accompanies me to the store because she helps me to select quality items at affordable prices. She has a lot of experience and she is teaching me how to make wise choices like the bunch of organic bananas I picked up on Monday for just 50 cents. Fantastic. Okay, next question. Which foods do you buy frequently when you go to the grocery store? Okay, so again, part one, kind of general questions. The examiners expect that you can answer these more or less, no problem. So which foods do you buy frequently when you go to the grocery store? Again, obviously that why question is included there. All right, so Dylan Patel says, the food which I buy the most is eggs because it tastes delicious and it contains more protein than most other foods, including meats. So it's good for building up our muscles and the body. Yeah, very good, Dylan. Nice answer. Give me a couple more foods. Awaz says, I am a healthy person, therefore I routinely buy natural and fresh fruits and vegetables, as well as dairy products, such as cottage cheese and yogurt. I go twice a month grocery shopping. In fact, I was there two days ago. Awaz, that last part belongs to the previous question. Uh, Awaz, milk foods are called dairy products, okay? Students, just a quick bit of vocabulary here for you, okay? So, dairy foods or sometimes just dairy products include milk, cheese, yogurt, sour cream, okay? So those are all dairy products, okay? We don't call them milk foods. That sounds strange. We call them dairy products, okay? Or simply dairy. You can say just dairy. All right, let's see some more answers. Pachu says, when I go to the grocery store, I buy several kinds of food items uh, often, such as fruits and vegetables, oil and cereal products, as well as frozen foods like frozen meat. Okay. Because the store often goes out of stock and I like to make sure that I have some at home. Very nice, Pachu. Uh, Tech Z Napson, uh, please don't spam the chat. Just one time, okay? Just one answer, please, okay? It's rude to other students to spam, okay? So Tech Z Napson says, well, I'm a fitness freak, so I like to buy groceries containing protein like eggs, soya bean, meat, fish, and lots of green vegetables too. Tech, that's a really nice answer. Again, don't spam the chat, please. Just one time, okay? All right. Um, Sue, 41, 21, oh, says, I generally purchase fresh fruits and vegetables, which I need for the week, as uh, these cannot be bought in bulk since they spoil. However, um, 
I'd be lying if I said that I don't also include a bag of chocolates. A bar of chocolates or a chocolate bar? Bag of chocolates? Possible, I guess. Okay. Uh, Kriti Bajaj says, being an Indian, I really like making Indian food often. So I mostly buy tomatoes, onions, as these are required in many Indian cuisines. Okay, Kriti, I did some paraphrasing there because you have a lot of repetition. So make sure you avoid repetition and paraphrase those key words. Okay. All right. So Daniil says, if you see me in a grocery shop, my cart would probably be filled up with um, juicy fruits. I adore bananas and apples so much. Uh, like the five kilos of apples I bought yesterday, which I'm almost out of just a few days later. Okay, nice. Daniil, I love the uh, lead-in. In fact, so much so that I'm going to borrow it for you, uh, from you. It's really nice. Well, if you were to see me in a grocery store, you would notice that my cart is filled with fresh produce, especially greens like lettuce, and broccoli, as well as uh, proteins like eggs and chicken. Since I have a sweet tooth, I'm sure you would also notice at least one chocolate bar. All right. And don't be afraid to smile. It's okay to smile during the speaking interview of the IELTS exam. All right, repeat after me. Oops. Uh, which foods do you buy frequently when you go to the grocery store? Well, if you were to see me in a grocery store, you would notice that my cart is filled with fresh produce, especially greens like lettuce and broccoli, as well as proteins like eggs and chicken. Since I have a sweet tooth, I'm sure you would also notice at least one chocolate bar. Let's not repeat the word notice. Let's replace it with C. Again, students at home when you're practicing, always work on replacing repetitive words in your responses. If you don't know a replacement, use a thesaurus to help you. Thesaurus. Okay. All right. Let's take one more question. Here we go. Uh, have there been changes in the prices of foods over the past five years? Give me a nice full sentence answer for that one. So have there been changes in the prices of foods over the past five years? Okay. Have there been changes in the prices of foods over the past five years? Murasa says, yes, the prices of food items have changed dramatically as compared to five decades back due to tax. Like now in Afghanistan, people have to pay 25% tax on 100 rupees. Okay, it's not five decades, Murasa. It's just five years which is half a decade. Careful, Marasa, when you're paraphrasing. It's half a decade. Okay. All right. Vanessa says, yes, no doubt. The value of foods have risen a lot in the last five years, which can be explained by both climate change as well as rising per capita income, like fruits that have tripled in price. 
uh, use uh, the um, the word tripled, Vanessa, as a um, uh, an infinitive to include another present perfect. So fruits have tripled in price. Okay, that works better. Yeah, definitely you're noticing that this is present perfect. Have there been changes? When you see the present perfect, definitely use present perfect at least once in your response. Ideally, you're using present perfect twice. So yes, there have been changes in the cost of foods. They have become much more expensive, like bananas, which have tripled in price. Notice how I just used the present perfect three times in my answer. That's how I make sure that the examiner is going, aha, yeah, this uh, candidate knows present perfect. They can use it fluently, and I'm going to give them a maximum uh, score for this answer. Okay? So uh, make sure to do that. Right? Make sure to do that. Use present perfect lots okay and he says yes def yes the prices have actually gone up in the last half decade fresh fruits have seen the highest increase which have doubled over time uh, the meat and grains have also become more expensive very nice any very nice use of multiple present perfect um, yes the price of foods have gone up over the past half decade, okay? It's very good. Uh, gone up, increased, okay? Um, using the present perfect, half decade, paraphrasing the five years. Um, mostly, fresh produce, like fruits and vegetables, have doubled during this time and the price of meats have also become significantly more expensive. A nice cut of steak that cost around ten dollars back in 2014 now costs closer to 25 bucks all right repeat after me have there been changes in the prices of foods over the past five years? Yes, the price of foods has gone up over the past half decade. Mostly fresh produce like fruits and vegetables have doubled during this time and the price of meats have also become significantly more expensive. A nice cut of steak that cost around $10 back in 2014 now costs closer to 25 bucks. All right, students, so really nice answers. Again, remember the advice that I gave you at the beginning of how to give complete answers and how to include details. That's what you need to do in order to get good band scores. There's two more questions here. When do you like to go grocery shopping? And if you could change one thing about your favorite grocery store, what would that be? I challenge you to practice and answer these last two questions on your own. Record your answers on your phone in MP3 format. Send them to my email, adrian at aehelp.com, and I will give you a, a, a score, a band score estimate uh, based on your response, whether that would be considered a band six, seven, eight, or nine. So I look forward to hearing those, giving you a little bit of advice and help. And again, to get the best online practice and preparation possible, go to aehelp.com for the academic 
version of the exam. Download our app, Academic IELTS Help. And for the general, check us out at GIELTSHelp.com where we have all of what you need, especially for students that are at the band 5, 5.5, and need to get bumped up to that band 7. This is the general version of our website. This is the academic version. Check us out there, join us there, and make sure to join me tomorrow at the same time for some more live IELTS classes. That's all for now. Thank you so much for all of your participation. There were some really great answers. Sorry if I missed uh, some of your responses. I'll make sure to catch different students at different times. Have an awesome rest of your Wednesday. Bye for now.